In our Part 3 tutorial animation, we will continue creating our pick-and-place program using the RoboLogic simulation software package from Logic Design. To review, the objective of our program was to pick up a box from the end of Conveyor 1 and place it onto Conveyor 2. In our Part 1 tutorial, we identified the 12 sequential program actions required to accomplish our desired task. We also identified the four significant tool center point positions required to perform the task. In tutorial 2, we added the instructions required for our program. At this point, you may want to pause and review the instructions listed in the program we created in tutorial 2. In this part 3 tutorial, we're going to locate and store the appropriate gripper positions required to perform the desired task. Our four identified TCP positions will be stored to the position register. With our program loaded, we click on the main button to return to the main control panel. We'll be using the jog buttons to position the tool center point at our four target positions. The A1 through A5 jog buttons are used for angular motion. Linear motion is accomplished by jogging with the X, Y, and Z buttons. We return to the main program and click on the Conveyor 1 On button. This will bring a box to the end of the conveyor and assist us in locating our target position. With our box in position, we click on the Camera 11 button to get a better view of the target location. We'll be using the A1 Plus and A1 Minus buttons to swing the tool center point directly over top of the box. We press and hold the A1 Plus button to move the tool center point in an angular motion towards Conveyor 1. We stop when the tool center point is positioned directly above the box. With our first target position acquired, we click on the Save Position button to store this location to the position register. To confirm the acquisition of the target location, we click on the Position Register button to bring up the Position Register window. As can be seen, the target information location has been stored to the position register under the P0 index number. We click on the main button to return to the main view. We click on the camera 9 button to get a better view of our next target location. Use the linear motion Y- minus button to bring the tool center point into view with this camera angle. The Y plus and Y- minus jog buttons move the tool center point linearly up and down. Now that we have the tool center point in view of this camera angle, we can clearly see that it's not aligned with the box. We use the Z plus and minus buttons to move the tool center point left or right. In this instance, we need to move the center point to the right. In order to do this, we click on the Z plus button a few times. Now that the tool center point is aligned with the box, we click on the Y minus button to drop the tool center point down to box level. Now that we've acquired the desired position, we once again click on the Save Position button to add this location to the position register. Next, click on the Position Register button to view this new entry. As can be seen, we now have two of our required four target positions stored in the register. After clicking on the Home position to reset the arm, click on Camera 11 again to have a better view of the next target location. Once again, we use the A1 button to jog the tool center point in an angular motion. This time, we want to position it directly over Conveyor 2. When we've arrived over Conveyor 2, we click on the Camera 12 button. This button gives us a bird's eye view looking down from the tool center point. We can make fine adjustments using this camera angle. Once we've confirmed the tool center points in the appropriate location, we click on the Save Position to add this third of four desired locations to our position register. With the position saved, we return to the Camera 9 view. Moving on, we use the Y- minus button to lower the tool center point to a place hovering just above Conveyor 2. From this location, we'll be dropping the box onto the conveyor. We click on the Save Position button to enter our fourth and final target location. We can review our position entries by clicking on the Position Register button. 
As can be seen, all four of the desired target TCP locations have been stored in the position register. This brings the Part 3 tutorial to an end. In the fourth and final tutorial in this series, we'll adjust the rates of motion for our program. We'll also create a conditional loop to allow this action to be repeated a given number of times. We'll then finally test and run our finished application. For more information regarding the Robologic Simulation Software Package or any of the other simulation tools offered by Logic Design, contact us at the email, toll-free number, or website shown here.